All right, I'm here with the nomadic gaijin, Luke. Uh, welcome to the show, Luke, uh, and uh, please introduce yourself for everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, no yeah. medication. Um, yeah. Luke, I'm a YouTuber. I've been doing YouTube for about a little over a year and a half, and I've been in IRL live streaming for the last couple of months and uh, trying to figure out how to do all that together. I, oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I'm from uh, San Diego, California, in the okay. cool. US, and for 13 years and loving it. Okay, uh, we lost you a little bit there, so could you uh, tell us where you're from one sure. more time? Yeah. Yeah, I'm from San Diego, California in the U.S., and I've been in Japan for, for over... Over 13 years, is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so um, just having a couple of hiccups on the connection, uh, I think think we're all right but uh yeah so you've been in japan 13 years actually uh, it's it's funny um i just celebrated my 13 year uh japan anniversary this week as well so um oh, wow. okay. yeah yeah what month did you um did you arrive in japan oh hold on one second mm. um i just i noticed i was on a vpn i just popped off i hope this one okay uh, now it should the connection should be a little better okay it sound better now yeah sounds good you edit this stuff out, right? Oh <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I I can I can I, I, can, I can clip out. <laughs> no, you don't have to. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever. You, I, I, you, you do what you gotta do. Yeah I, yeah, I I usually don't edit too much unless it's at the request of of the guest. So. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I leave it as you as you will. Cool. Uh, hmm. Unless something's really inappropriate, so but it should be fine. That, uh, oh, as, yeah. as long uh, as it won't get me pulled from YouTube, I think I'm I think we're we're good on that. So yeah. Awesome. Right. Okay, well, uh, it, it's a little bit com more complex, I guess. I came here for a year, yeah. and I went back, and then I, I was in uh, San Diego for six months, hmm. and then came back here and for the, the 12, all over 12 years. So it's it's like in total, I guess. Oh, okay. So like you first yeah. arrived in like 2008, right? Technically, I, yeah, I got here in 2007, like okay. July or something, Okay. and I went back the next year, six months, and then, uh, okay. I don't know, maybe it's been longer now. I haven't sat there and calculated. Right, that, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, mine's, mine's kind of a similar story. Like, I came in 2008 and then stayed for like a year and three months and then went back to America for about a year and then came back. So, like, you know, I, I instead of explaining all that to, to everyone who asked me how long I've been here, I just say 13 years, you know, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it's yeah. a lot easier that way. Right, right. So, um, yeah, um, what um, kind of, you know, rolling back here, so what made you originally want to come to Japan, you know, well, well, why Japan, you know, and then, like, uh, you know, tell us the story about the, the short time you were here and then going back, so... Yeah, uh, I, I can. I'll, I'll keep as brief as possible. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I came in uh, in college for okay. uh, a couple of weeks, and I loved it so much, hmm. and thought, hey, when I graduate, maybe I can teach for a year before getting into a serious career. Mm -hmm. And and so I did. I think a lot of people think that way, right? When they come yep. out here right after college, or. Yep. Uh, and I I came here with my ex girlfriend at the time. She was in her final year of college. She just came out to study abroad. So we ended up like right next to each other and work placed me quite close to her that was cool and so when she went yeah, it was cool but you know when she went back it was kind of like well I, I guess i got it back too but i, I wasn't quite ready but no. you know we were still together so i went back and we broke up like right away <laughs> uh, i bet you're uh, kind of kicking yourself on that one huh? <laughs> but yeah not in a way it was really good because i uh I missed home a lot and when I went back I got to find that all the things I, I kind of glorified about home that hmm. I really missed hmm. weren't, weren't really as amazing as I as I thought and actually Japan was where I really felt at home so yeah. I think I needed that six months it was really important to uh, to have that time yeah how long were you here before you went back yeah a year maybe like a year uh, okay. and a month or a year and some weeks yeah. something like that I was on a one year contract okay yeah very, I mean very very similar to, to me like I didn't travel back to America at all during that like year and three months I was here. Same. same yeah, yeah, and so did you like have any like reverse cu culture shock when you went back? Because I, I sure did. That was it was weird. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Uh, the first thing that I noticed, and it's the weirdest thing, I, I love kanji, yeah. and so whenever I'm walking around, I'm always trying to read signs, and if I don't know what a sign says, I will try to you know look it up later or try to figure yeah. it out. But yeah. that's kind of 
something I didn't realize was very entertaining for me. And I went back and I could read all the signs and it was very boring. For me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the small yeah, thing, but. yeah. Studying kanji. I, I mean, that I, I, when studying Japanese, I went straight for the reading first before I could even, you know, string a sentence together. You know, I, I wanted to at least know what I'm looking at, you know? So I have very similar thing. Um, I, I, I was like, oh, I can't, I can read everything now. It's it's uh, it's it's boring, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, but do exactly. you, do you get now when you see like let's say Western media or you know uh, depictions of of Japan or they try and write you know Japanese script and you can read it but it looks odd. It's like reversed or something. Have you noticed that sometimes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or you know, on on the stream, people ask me. I'm always reading signs for people, but when they, I get to like you know those stone. Uh, you know, tablets where they got all the writing really oh, small. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, and, you know, yeah. They, they get to those things and they're like, well, even my wife can't read some of that stuff, so yeah. good luck. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the kind of script that they use is, is a bit, uh, yeah, really really weird and small on those, yeah, so. Okay, right. so yeah. so you were, like, you were teaching for, like, a year when you first came here, and then uh, was it through, like, um, a Kaiwa or, like, ALT thing? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. I okay. worked for, I don't mind saying it, I worked for Eikaiwa Eon oh, at the time. Me too. So I got, where, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, too? Yeah, where, where uh, what school were you at? Uh, Albadai. It was, uh, it's in uh, uh, Kanagawa. So okay. It's like okay. Kind of, a, it, w it wasn't super far from Tokyo, but it yeah. was, you know, out there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, Eon, that's how I came here as well. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they sponsored my visa, so, uh, you know, that was... It was interesting. So, cool. Man. It was like Kanagawa, kind of where you wanted to be, or like did they just say, "Hey, you're gonna be here"? Or no, I wanted. Uh, I knew that my ex was going to be somewhere close to Yokohama, so I requested Yokohama. Okay. Plus, it's uh, San, San Diego's sister city. And when I visited Japan in college, I really loved Yokohama, Minato Mirai, mm -hmm. and Chinatown, mm -hmm. and Yokohama's main city area. So I, I, right. I just wanted to go there, and okay. I got lucky. Yeah, nice, man. Nice. Yeah, my request was Kobe, and they stuck me in Tochigi, but which I grew to love <laughs> Tochigi, so, you know. Oh, Tochigi's awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I spent most of my time in Japan there. You know, I just moved to Tokyo this year, so, you know. Um, oh, right, you're in Tokyo now. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was in Utsunomiya for, you know, 12-plus years, so it was uh, mm -hmm. it's quite a, quite a long time. I, I enjoyed, you know, being close to uh, the mountains out there it was great you know but um, absolutely yeah it's it's a different environment I mean I've, I've visited Tokyo so many times so I'm, I'm very familiar with Tokyo but living actually living here is um, it's interesting you know it's a it's it's an adjustment for sure but uh, you know riding the trains everywhere instead of driving for now so I had to get rid of my car <laughs> that was that was not fun but, right yeah that, that'd be tough for me that'd be a little tough yeah honestly yeah. I do love driving. Yeah. So where whereabouts are you now? I'm in Kawaguchi in Saitama. Okay. So okay. Hmm. yeah. Close enough to Tokyo and stuff. Right. I can still go there and stream or, or film, but I, I get a little bit more space here. Uh it's a, it's a kind of a nice neighborhood. Yeah. It, it feels a little bit like home, to be honest. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, um, like every every shop's got parking lots, like free parking lots and you know, everybody there's a lot of parks and a lot of space. Yeah. Compared yeah. to Tokyo, so it's it's pretty nice. Yeah. So you're originally from San Diego, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I've, I've been to San Diego once, um, long time ago, but I, I, you know, just the three days I was there, I, I loved, I fell in love with that city and I, you know, maybe growing up living there, just like, like with me growing up in my hometown, like you get used to it. You're like, ah, this is, you know, is boring after a while, but like, I can't see someone getting bored living in San Diego. Like, why would you want to move away? You know, but well, like, what was your? It, yeah, go ahead. It, no, you, you you really can, hmm. uh, and uh, it's too perfect. Uh, yeah. it, it, the weather's uh, at least it's changing now, but it's, it's the hmm. weather's always the same. Yeah, it's always like it's almost always sunny. Mm -hmm. It's always nice. Uh, this no real seasons to be honest. The uh, food doesn't. It's, it's there's not a, like you know like in Japan every week or every month has sort of a new seasonal drink food yeah. uh, activity i really love the the change the variety I, I never really felt that in san diego okay it's not a bad thing but i just uh i, I like that it's it, there's more adventure to be had here yeah yeah i get it i get it yeah um yeah apparently according to some uh 
people I, I've heard from that uh, Japan has four seasons. So, you know, color me shocked. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it has like 10 seasons, to be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's uh, definitely, definitely more than four if you count the rainy season. So, uh, yeah. But, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, San Diego's great, but uh, yeah, you, you had, I get it. You have to, you have to explore somewhere else, you know, especially, uh, you know, just judging by your, YouTube and, and, and Twitch and everything, you love exploring. So so when you yeah. when you came back to Japan, what did you what what were you doing originally then? So So it, it's yeah. uh it's a very, very random I'll just give mm. you like the quick uh how how I got to where I am here, but okay. I came uh, I tried to come back with Eon mm. uh but there was some issue. I, I it was it was hard to figure out but uh, like I couldn't, I didn't, my application didn't go through. Okay. I, and I just like, and I, I was kind of like, you know, just in case I should have a backup. So I yeah. applied to Geos at the All time right. was still mm -hmm. functioning, right? Yeah, and, they were still uh, going on, too, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but there were warning signs, so they hired me. But like uh, I was supposed to go train in in Canada or something. But I, I think it was in Vancouver they had their training office. But they they were like, nope, you're gonna train in Japan. So oh, okay. <laughs> so went to Japan and within. Within the year, I was there about a year, I think. Yeah. And within that time, year and a half or something. Within that time, they went bankrupt. Yeah. Like all their all their abroad schools closed. They went bankrupt. Yeah. And I had met my wife. We had just we had started dating. And hmm. uh, yeah, our school closed. I was living in company housing, and I was like, I better get out of here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I ended up working. Yeah. <laughs> right? Jump, jumping was, from the sinking ship. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, it was good that I did too, because it kind of yeah. we just kept going and getting worse and worse, but. I went into another A Kaiba that was mm. connected to a kindergarten, international kindergarten, and okay. I loved what I saw there. And I mm. said, "I want to, I want to work here. Can I work in your kindergarten? Can your kind of your kindergarten division?" Yep. And the boss was like, "Yeah, sure. You know, we're expanding." So I tried that. I loved it so much. I had a yep. blast working with kids. Yeah. And I, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I went to another school, and uh, there the boss. You know, I worked really hard. The boss was like, he made me kind of his right hand man. Hmm. I, I nice. moved up to manager yeah. within a year, and after a couple of years, when he sold the company, I became principal of the school. Nice. And so that that's what I was doing for the last four years until I left. Okay. Uh, this year. <laughs> so, oh, so so you made you made a career change just this year then? Yeah, yeah, just in uh, in April. Okay. Or, well, in March, March. I okay. Guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, you were, you know, kind of heading up to school yourself and, and doing that sort of thing so um what was the main motivation to to leave to, to kind of change things up <laughs> i get that question a lot yeah uh and 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 without um you know without getting myself in any trouble but right. Right. no it, it was uh i told you the the owner hmm. of the school he was half well I, I didn't mention yet but he was half Japanese half uh, Kiwi, I guess New Zealander, okay. Okay. and and he he uh, he had a really good sense of how to run the school, and and it was really great working for him. When he sold it to a Japanese company that had no idea how to run a, an international school or deal with foreign employees, and okay, uh, it just it just kind of they kept trying things that weren't working, and eventually the the environment had gotten so toxic that uh, I was just like I I can't be here anymore. Yeah. I was so stressed. I wasn't sleeping. It was getting really bad. So, Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so as yeah, everyone, a lot of people have left since, and it's, it's kind of just right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that, so unfortunate. It, but. Yeah, it's kind of sad seeing something that you know you really enjoyed working at and and seeing grow and help grow, and then it just kind of takes that downward spiral, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so, I was I was there eight years. It was it was tough. Yeah, yeah, I, I I would imagine that's nearly you know a decade of of your life and career, you know. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, but uh, on to greener pastures, right? So what? So what do you do full time now? Are you into? <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you doing the Twitch thing full full time or? Yeah, tw Twitch and YouTube. Uh, nice. I'm okay. kind of I'm skating by somehow. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, I, 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 yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you ha you kind of had to build like a an audience first. Before. You can't just like dive into it without building <laughs> it. So, I mean, when did you? You know, when did you start? what got you motivated to start YouTube and, you know, and, and Twitch and all the, I guess these are two separate entities really, but, um, because they attract different audiences, right? Uh, what came first and then what was the motivation for that in the beginning? YouTube was, I mean, from the first time I came out here, I was yeah. always 
you know, taking pictures, posting on social media for mm-hmm. family, friends, and they really liked it. And I had always wanted, I, I was intrigued with YouTube from like day one I was here, but I always saw it as some out of reach goal. Like yep. I just, that, that's what like the pros do. That's not something I can do. And I would start watching other people and thinking like, maybe I could do something like that if I learned mm-hmm. how to do it. And uh, oh, I guess a couple of years before I started, I was buying little little things here and there, like a little camera and trying to video and play around with it. And yep. I was just like, these are awful. <laughs> it's way Every, everyone like, starts off that way, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for two years, I, I was I was like on this, I want to do YouTube, but yeah. I don't I don't have the ability. Mm. And then I guess one day I was just like, you know what, forget it. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to learn this stuff. I'm going to figure out how to do it. And I spent a couple of months just deep into it, like watching videos, taking notes, playing mm. with the program and mm. and, uh, you know, like those kind of things. So I have most likely a dog here. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. I have two dogs. Oh, OK. okay yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, kind, what kind of dogs you got? I have two papillons. Oh, okay. Our, our house is small, so we yeah. wanted uh, you know small dogs, but at least smart dogs. So yeah, uh, yeah. these two are, are pretty intelligent. Well, cool, cool. So yeah, so I mean, you you kind of studied it and you know just finally dove into it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, originally that that's kind of how you know how I ventured into YouTube was um, I, I I really didn't intend to to make YouTube videos. Like, but I, when I was learning Japanese, I, I followed a few channels about learning Japanese, and mm-hmm. uh, like I think one of them was, um, God, what was his name, um, Moses McCormick, Lao Shu or something. But anyway, he this guy like spoke so many languages. He was like a polyglot. He spoke like thirty something languages, right? And um, he would do like also material reviews, and so I, I was like, okay. Um, well, I I have a few Japanese books. Why don't I review it and put it up on YouTube? Just for I don't I don't really even remember the motivation. And I made like one video and forgot about it. Like I just I forgot that I even put it up on online. You know, this is back in like 2010, I think. And then I come back to it like a year later, and I see that it has like over a thousand views, and I didn't even do anything. You know, and I'm just like, I didn't advertise it. I didn't share it with anybody. I'm just like, how the hell did that happen? You know, so, <laughs> the, so, so wait, there may be something to this YouTube thing, right? So I, you know, I got more into it and God, you're right. Those first few videos are, yeah, they're embarrassing, you know, so. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I just yeah, can't. I mean. Yeah. But um, I never really found my footing with my original channel. And, you know, I made videos and I made like some videos that actually got a lot of views, you know, uh, but, and it never felt like really genuine or anything what I was doing, you know, so I just kind of, I started over, I, I wiped it clean, all those, you know, you know, I was actually making some money off of it back then, it was like, not much, but maybe like a hundred bucks a year, that, that Google yeah, check right. for a hundred bucks a year, and I was like, oh, that's not bad, you know, but it wasn't enough to live off of, you know, so I just said, eh, maybe youtube's not for me so i quit for a bit you know so but mm-hmm. but what what keeps you going i mean like you you kind of you know you do more like the travel travel logs right like what were mm-hmm. your original ideas that you were doing and were did you originally have like i want to do travel videos in the beginning or did it sort of morph into that well um i i i had uh I don't know if you know the YouTuber Tata Tron. He's not around anymore. Mm. I mean, like he doesn't make videos anymore. But he was back in like ten years ago when, okay. um, you know, him and Tikio Sam and a bunch of those kind of YouTubers yep. of that generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tikio Sam's still going, but uh, Tata Tron's like completely out. He would tell me all the stories about how he got into YouTube, and he, you know, I'd watch his videos, and you know, he was kind of a motivating factor for me to get started, and also yep. just like he was just you know, just do it, just do it, yeah, have fun. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been doing these kind of trips where I sleep in the car and I travel around for like three days, four days, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, a week sometimes. And I've been doing that for years. And I was like, why don't I just film some of this? Because it's interesting, you know, and, and I, I don't I'm, all I have is pictures. And yeah. Pictures are nice. But like, yeah. uh, I think when I made my first uh travel travel video mm. going back and watching it even now it's really cool because i feel like i get to go back and, and enjoy that trip because i remember stuff you don't even see on camera but it's like oh yeah i remember how that 
how the air smelled there or how the yeah. food tasted and then i was just like wow this is a, a great memory for me so even if no one watches it even if this is nothing to, to anyone or doesn't amount to anything for me it'll always be like a great memory so i'm going to keep doing these it's a good way to look at it um even now if i go hiking somewhere and i try and record something like i always feel still a little bit awkward talking to the like if i'm talking to an actual person like I, I'm fine, but like just talking to a, a camera lens is still a bit awkward, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. I so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I still, I, I still try, you know. But uh, I, I want to do more, um, you know, more hiking, more, um, more travel videos as well. Um, once, once I, you know, in the future, if I ever get a car again, that'll, uh, that'll be, you know, easier to go around. But uh, right now, you know, I'm kind of you know kind of focusing on maybe exploring Tokyo a bit I know everyone's done Tokyo so that's I want to maybe find some areas maybe out west that a lot of people don't really really think about to being Tokyo but it is Tokyo you know uh, out, out in yeah. west Tokyo you know so that's what I'm thinking about going to next so um, now so you started uh, YouTube you started doing these videos and you know started getting some traction and stuff so was that originally all you wanted to do or you know how how did you make the shift to uh, twitch which you said you kind of started this year right yeah <laughs> yeah okay so what yeah. what 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 where did that transition start you know and and how did you uh how did you get into that well i about maybe january or february this year mm -hmm. i can't remember exactly when uh, I saw someone doing just like a walk walking around and doing some video on reddit mm -hmm. and uh, It was a live stream and I I was thinking when I get X amount of you know a thousand subs I can do a live stream mm -hmm. on on YouTube I, I, I know now that you could do it before that, but I, I didn't know at the time So I was thinking that would be really great to do some live streams when I go places, you know before I, I record but I also do some live stream mm -hmm. and I started getting into the the reddit community and and recording uh, you know doing the live streams and the the community was incredible i mean getting like you know four or five thousand people watching and and being like we want to know more we want to know more and people being like why aren't you on twitch and i'm like twitch is for video games why would i be doing that right. you know <laughs> I, I i was completely like i, I had yeah. no idea that it had an irl section at all okay i was i was clueless and uh yeah then I started the Discord and the community kind of grew very big, mm. and like for for me anyways, and the and the YouTube started growing and yeah, yeah people were like, we want to see more live streams, but you know, of, of course, Twitch is kind of geared a little bit better for that at the moment. Although yep. I think YouTube is sort of catching up, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot more discovery on Twitch. So then yeah. I wanted I wanted to try it, and uh, and and then Keshin found me and and kind of like gave me you know, here's how i do things and then he introduced me to other twitch streamers mm. and then the kind of the big moment because i wasn't really thinking to get into it yep. but i went to i did a i went to enoshima which i guess all the streamers love so much but i went to enoshima and i met uh like 10 other streamers oh wow and okay they were all yeah they were all very very sweet especially uh milky puff and kent they were just overwhelmingly awesome and nice to me and they were like you should try twitch they weren't seeing me as competition like someone that might take their viewers they were like you should do it and we'll help you like the 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 community is so awesome like that the, the, they do that you know mm. that's cool and that yeah. made a it made a big impression on me yeah yeah cause, because youtube is very uh, sorry go ahead no i i was <laughs> i was like, just gonna say maybe you, maybe you're gonna actually say the same thing but you know i always you know there's a you know a few good you know really down to earth and chill youtubers but i always found especially the japan youtube community like everyone not everyone but a lot of people saw others as like competition in a way and it was it was a bit yeah and that that's another reason why i didn't really get really into youtube community i went to a few of the uh the meetups in in tokyo you know uh, several years ago and it just um like i said met a few cool people but for the most part it was it just didn't really sit well with me and I didn't feel the community was really cohesive it was very, you know like you had your clicks and stuff so I was like nah I'm not I'm not into this you know so but that's cool to hear about the the twitch um community because I to be honest I I didn't really I knew about twitch but like you I thought it was like for games and I didn't really even 
know that people did uh, I didn't even know what IRL streaming was until like this year too and I'm like oh there's like a whole thing of people just walking around and showing off Japan or, or wherever like I mean uh, there's IRL streamers all over the world obviously and um, think who's like the biggest one Andy Milanakis or something he's uh, he's right. been doing he's been doing it forever right so yeah yeah so so that so you got you were not talked into but you you were sort of um, welcomed into the community in a way and so I think a lot of people are kind of hesitant about like getting into this because there's like the gear involved and the money cost and the money sink of like oh I gotta get this data plan and you know like how do you even begin to start that you know well uh you know, I, I was, okay, I guess the difference for me is when yeah. I started the Discord, um, a few people volunteered to be my admins, and okay. they have been, uh, they're always there to mod on YouTube, on mm -hmm. Reddit, or on Twitch. So it was like I had this team of people who were like, don't worry, we got your back. They're telling me, That's here's cool. here's some of the gear that people use. Here's you know, and, they, and they set up, they actually went into my Twitch and set up you know um the 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 channel point redeems they mm. they said they helped the community created the badges and then they put it together and it was it was just having this incredible community that can support you it wasn't so scary if i had just yeah. walked into it by myself i would have been like i can't i can't do this i tried it once yeah uh, directly through the twitch app and it was like whatever three three sixty p or something it was yeah. really it was really terrible. Oh, the the I, Twitch app's I, horrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I I didn't know. I thought, hey, yeah, it's yeah. designed for that, right? Yeah. I, the same thing with YouTube. I went directly through the YouTube app the first time. I that was pretty awful. So, yeah. Uh, and I I was they were telling me what it takes to be a Twitch streamer. I was like, no, I'm just gonna be a simple cell phone streamer, just my one phone and my gimbal, and uh, and here we are. Uh, quite different setup. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I thought it originally. Mm -hmm. was you know and like I, I you know I have a gimbal I have a phone and then you know I try it and go ah, I don't know there's something different than what yeah. I'm doing and what I'm seeing on Twitch and then like yeah. I see this list of like gear that people use I'm like how the hell like I like uh, for example another um, big streamer uh, you may know him uh, Cash Meow like, that, that guy yeah. has like like I can't even begin to fathom like he's got like four or five sims he's got yeah. insane amounts of, yeah it's, yeah, it's but, incredible yeah but i mean that guy i mean that's i guess that's how he earns his living you know so uh that's uh yeah. you know the, the money earned goes into you know improving upon that so was it scary kind of like i mean uh, you know you left your old job and you're like i'm just gonna do this full time like where i mean you're married right what'd your wife think of that you yeah. know <laughs> so, uh the uh if I, i'm not even gonna get like the whole story of yeah. the work situation but by yeah. the end yeah we were both like it's time to walk away you okay. know mm. it was tough because it was a it was a decent paying job and it mm. had good benefits and stuff but yeah it was we were both like uh, it's become so toxic there's just staying it's just not an option no. but you know i had i had saved up a lot of holidays um, okay. working there for eight years and mm. so uh and because we got a, we it was kind of a nice benefit we got all the school holidays already included in the contract so our regular holidays would just roll over you know okay and and so i had a couple i basically had two two and a half months after leaving wow plus a spring holiday all that stuff yeah i had about two and a half months to uh, you know fully paid so i i came out with like i have a time limit to get this stuff going but i have a cushion it yeah helps. yeah uh and then the community has been very supportive to mm -hmm. uh, to help keep it going and you know it's still scary at times but I love what I do, and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, it's just like one day Twitch, one day working on YouTube videos, one day Twitch. I work pretty much every day. <laughs> well, that I mean, <laughs> that's to take a day off, but yeah. Well, that that's cool though. I mean, because you obviously like what you do, and yeah, you know, I mean, you had to. I'm, I'm guessing you had to register as a as a business, right? No, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm uh, once you're monetized through YouTube mm. or. Or Twitch, you you register with Google or Amazon, okay. and you, you do all the tax stuff with them. Okay. And of course, I have to do more when I get you know I, when I do my taxes. But mm. no, I mean it's it's not officially a business. Oh, uh, as good. of as of now. Yeah. Maybe maybe if I'm er earning a certain amount, I might have to like register as some some kind of uh, yeah. Was it sole proprietor or something? Yeah. But at the moment, that's I mean uh, that's 
I think that's free to do though, or maybe like one yen yeah. to register as a sole proprietor. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's cheap, and also you can bring your tax uh, receipts and stuff to the Chamber of Commerce. Like I looked into it before, because uh, I've I've owned two companies here. Uh, okay. I shut mm. them down, but you know, just like playing around with different ideas and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's not it's not too much of a hassle. It's one, yeah. but yeah, it's it is. No. It's it's a lot to think about. It's very busy. Well, I I do know. Um, I, I don't really follow him too closely, but uh, I know that who's it? Uh, Retro Gaijin. Uh, he's another Twitch streamer. Like I think he yeah. he registered his as like a, a full on business maybe, and um, he he just does his full time. You know, so um, right yeah, yeah, that that's kind of um, even uh, yeah, yeah. You had like a two month buffer there, but still, that's got to be a little scary. <laughs> thinking like, okay, this is not like a traditional normal nine to five job, but I'm, you know, you obviously had the passion to keep doing it and make it succeed and you had the support, you know, that's, um, I wouldn't say necessarily luck, but I mean, it's, it's good that you had that sort of support in the beginning. Cause you know, not a lot of people do, but I mean, you were able to get that just from, you know, attracting the, the right people with your content. Like you said, through Reddit, right? So, um, that's what I'm curious about. Like, I I really just check Reddit to read stuff. I, I consume Reddit. I don't really participate. But, I mean, how did you get from, like, just streaming on Reddit to get, like, 4,000 viewers? Like, did you just have a consistent schedule? Or, like, I mean, was it random? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. How does that work? So, I It, it, is, it is very random. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a lot of Twitch streamers now and YouTubers mm -hmm. are asking me uh, after that last podcast. It's yeah. basically said that Reddit's, like, a cheat for for getting into this uh, quickly okay. or anything, but it's not really like that. Like I, yeah. I was doing consistent streams and I was doing long streams, like these three hour walks, you know, on Reddit, that was a lot for me at the time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very engaged. So when there's that many people, most people can't keep up with the questions mm. or the audience. So mm. they kind of just pick and choose, but I'm, I'm keeping up. Like I'm answering as much as I can, every single question. Yeah. I'm engaging the audience, remembering who, even with the big numbers, remembering who I've seen before. Yeah. Uh, just from the time working with kids and being able to keep all the names together and stuff. Yep. And I yep. think that's that a good that skill to build engagement. up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that helped a lot. And yeah. uh, just being able to, you know, bring, also bring the YouTube gear because I had mm. the stabilizer. I've got the phone. I've got, you know, some other stuff that I can use, uh, like wind mic and things. So then the, the professional level, I would think, uh, compared to like other people just picking up a phone and walking around hmm. uh, was was I, I would like to say a higher level probably and hmm. people did appreciate that yeah yeah I mean yeah people can tell when your heart's in something and when you're just doing it for the hell of it right so um, yeah right yeah I mean like you know I've tried you know I still like stream games and stuff like that but you know I, I guess I don't really advertise it or anything but um, you know I just get especially when I stream games or something, I, I just get maybe four or five people, you know, which I appreciate, you know, but like, I don't really know how to move beyond that threshold of just a few people to gain an audience. You know what I mean? Like with YouTube, it came over time, you know, like videos would, I don't, back then, like years ago, back 2013, 2012 to 2014 is really when I was doing it like I didn't un really understand how the algorithm worked but I've somehow with my videos with with a certain number of them was able to garner a lot of views on certain videos right I still don't understand how I did it but the algorithm changes all the time you know like mm -hmm. what the tactics I use then do not work now and um, it's 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 a mystery you know so how, how yeah I guess long, long question short is like, how do you go beyond just getting a few people to expand like thousands of people? That's, you know, that's, uh, I think a lot of people wonder that, you know? Well, I mean, I, my still, my audience on, on Twitch and, and Reddit, uh, YouTube is still fairly small. Like it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like a core group of people that are just, they'll, they'll kind of go. I think any platform that I'm on, because they're just awesome people. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. Good. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to get <laughs> bigger. I just noticed that the more that I do each week, the yeah. the more the numbers sort of like slowly climb up. Yeah. I think just I, I'm kind of always on and I don't mm. know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I can go 
Uh, I did I did a 15 hour stream once where I didn't stop talking the whole time like I was completely engaged and did you lose uh, your voice after that <laughs> I did <Yeah. laughs> I did <laughs> and you know there's other streamers that do that yeah. uh, but just like I think that's that's really key I think I'll, I'll watch other game streamers yeah I'll be really excited when they're very active and they're talking with the chat and they're being funny and they're making a, a very entertaining scene out mm. of the the game that they're playing. Yeah. I'm not just describing what they see, but like actually enjoying it. And, and right. so, I think that does help when I when I do those kind of games. I I tend to start to bring in a, a few more viewers. Yeah. But yeah, in the end, I'm not a very good gamer, so I don't know how well I can keep that up. But it's more of a relaxing for me. Like the right, exactly. It's kind of off, almost off the clock for me when I'm doing game streams. It's just like yeah, if you yeah, want to yeah. talk, I'm here. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I've been playing games my whole life, but I still suck. You know, like I I, <laughs> I I I never got good at playing any. I mean, the games that I beat were like, I'm surprised I was able to get this far in it. You know, so I think <laughs> you know, I and I think like I I guess that you got to be really into a game to really play it fully. Like um, I think the only game I ever like platinumed on my PlayStation was um, the first one at least was. Uh, Fallout 4 or Fallout New Vegas I think it was one of those two it's one of the Fallout games and those are long like open ended games right so I put a lot of hours into those but since then I think I kind of I can't dedicate that much time to gaming anymore so I think it's now you know what I mean so uh, it's when um, nowadays it's like I get home from work and I think ah, I only got like two hours I could I uh, you know, I got all this other stuff to do. When when can I play games? You know, so I miss it sometimes, but you know, they're they're always there. You know, <laughs> for when I want to do it. You know, so that, that I think yeah. uh, before YouTube, I felt like I had more time to play games. But YouTube is kind of it, it's yep. like if there's free time, I should be working on something. So that's why. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, yeah. So it can be tough. Yeah, getting to that. So I mean, this is this is a full time gig now. So like, how do you come up consistently with ideas for content? You know. That, that's something I always struggle with was, you know, how to be unique and stand out, but, you know, still churn out stuff on a consistent basis, you know? I, I think the first point for me is, and, and, you know, this was a struggle at first, but the mm -hmm. first point was uh, everything that I'm doing mostly for live stream has already been done probably a hundred mm -hmm. times, uh, but it hasn't been done the way that I do it. Exactly. So I had yeah. to think about it like the people who like my content probably like my take on it i'm a very positive guy i'm a very happy guy and yeah. all the little things really excite me so yeah. it's almost like watching a child experience it for the first time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and there's something i i don't know some people might not like that some people may like that but the people who do like it seem to enjoy uh, my take on it and so i i'll go places that you know everyone's been but it's mm. still really fresh for me because i as long as i've lived here i didn't spend a lot of time in tokyo to be honest it's no. usually in my area so tokyo is still kind of new to me and yeah. so I, I walk in there and i'm not i'm not jaded at all it's not like oh, i've seen this place a hundred times it's like oh wow you know what i i just discovered nakano broadway like two weeks ago i never even knew it existed like these right are things yeah. That are like yeah normal for everybody but you know I, i'm just not in that so i get to walk around tokyo with my eyes like oh wow yeah like, you know, like this a, is so cool like a kid in a candy store or something right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that, so, uh, yeah. yeah, well, what I was going to say is I think the very first stream I saw you on was actually when you were visiting Utsunomiya, where I used to live. Yes. And, right. and I was like, oh, wow, this is – I've never seen someone who's, like, new to exploring Utsunomiya because why would you go to Utsunomiya? Because I, I lived there for so long. And, and, and then, you know, I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, participating in the chat, I'm like, ah – I actually there's some cool places you could actually go so how about this how about this you know and and actually seeing you explore that for the first time was was really cool actually so um, because I was familiar with it but you know seeing you know watching someone explore like let's say Oya with this with the caves and the in the rocks and everything for the first time is like yeah yeah I remember that I remember when that when I experienced that so that's that's cool you know so yeah so um Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and th and that, that's, I think that's what's a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed uh, you guys like leading me around, helping out and stuff. It was just like, yeah. I was so cool. Was fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that that's one point that that for me. Uh, I also, I, I mean, probably noticed like I'm, I, 
when I started YouTube, I was mm -hmm. working at the kindergarten, so I I didn't want any of the kids to find me, yeah, at, like doing you know swearing or being vulgar or doing things. But you know, so I, I decided to keep it very wholesome and family friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, found that I actually like that because that's kind of who I am anyways. I'm not, I'm right. not like, um, but like crazy, you know, yeah, yeah. dirty, wild. So you guys, so I, I really enjoyed that. And then as I left the kindergarten, I still was interested in, in staying that way. And so yeah. I think that's also been helpful. I think, uh, the, 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 the negative toxic people tend to yep. bring in negative toxic community. Yeah. And whereas the wholesome, like my, my just living life the way I want it and mm. being positive, being happy. And that that kind of brings in a really really good group of people. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. A couple. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No. <laughs> sorry. To, you on here. No, man. I'm I'm sorry to cut you off there. Um, go ahead. Uh, no, just there have been a few people who have said that they start they they became sort of fans or consistent fans because the community was so awesome when they came into yeah. the chat. Like everybody, the way that they're interacting. The way that we're interacting it felt like this community it wasn't just mm. like random viewers and so they got kind of that brought them in but then they really liked the content as well so you know that's i think that that makes a big difference right yeah yeah and i think it that's that's actually pretty cool because i mean i'm to be honest for me i'm really not offended by anything but at the same time you know people i think people who go out of their way to be offensive like I mean, as long as you're real, I think it's is if it's genuine, you know, like if that's is your personality where you grow up and you use that sort of language or whatever, fine. I mean, that's who you are. But like like you said for you, like you're not faking anything. You're just being yourself and, you know, that's I think that's what people are really attracted to in that sense, you know, and the fact that you are I say like, you know, like PG really uh for the most part um <laughs> yeah. uh, or whatever i mean brings in a wider audience you could say you know because if <laughs> if you're you know uh swearing and talking about vulgar stuff you know 24 7 yeah you'll you might get an audience but it, it's limited you know so mm -hmm. i mean that's um that that's cool that you're you're able to cultivate that sort of um image i guess but uh but you're just really just being who you are and that's i think that's yeah, what people yeah, that's people see yeah and you know <laughs> um i've i've seen in some of the the streams in the chats you know people make some jokes here or there but you're cool about it you don't like like over moderate unless it's you know obviously something that's really mm -hmm. horrible you know but i don't i think people in your audience kind of understand that too and, and they and they won't do that to mess up the uh the vibe of the of the stream you know what i mean so, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I've said this a lot on stream, too, because sometimes I'll do a collaboration and people yeah. will be like, they'll drop an F-bomb or S-bomb. They're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I know you're wholesome. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you be you. Yeah. What I do is my style. I don't need you guys to censor yourself. Please yeah. be yourselves. Yeah. In chat, too, I, if it's something that I don't want to respond to, I'll leave it. But, yeah. you know, uh, it's very rare that something comes in the chat where I'm just really unhappy with it. And, mm -hmm. I'll, and I'll say, hey, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're good vibes here. So, yeah. you know, if, if you feel that way, you don't need to be here kind of thing hmm. it's very rare for that to happen yeah. <laughs> so yeah I, I want people i don't want to censor people i want people to be able to be themselves but i'm just going to do things my way that's and awesome man yeah i think yeah. that's been really good because i don't i, I don't want to just be like yeah this is this is cartoon kids friendly only like no, no bad <laughs> comments right uh, <laughs> yeah. and it, you know i make my jokes too and i you know but yeah. I, I i still i still have a limit for myself it's just like obviously yeah yeah and, yeah and, and also I think uh, I, I lost my train. <laughs> I had to in my mind. I was like, yeah. "Oh, this is a good point." If, if, it, if it co if it comes back, let you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now yeah. I hate it when that happens too. You 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 get this idea in your head, and then you kind of talk your way out of it. And you're like, "What was I getting at there?" Yeah. So <laughs> been there many times. I think I think it happens more the, the older we get too. So. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So um, yeah. So. I've I've seen her in a few of your streams, but how does your wife feel about this sort of thing? I mean, is she she's cool with it or? She yeah. has um, it was it was tough at first the yeah. YouTube thing. She was really wanting me to to go and do it, and hmm. then YouTube at first. If you watch my early videos, it's more informational, instructional. Hmm. I'm hmm. not really talking much about myself or hmm. 
or who I am in my life. So at that point, I think it was fine. Yep. Uh, and then I, uh, a, a good friend of mine was saying, you know, Luke, your, your life's awesome. You got things you can do that a lot of people can't necessarily, like you've got dogs, you live in this house in, in Japan, you can drive and you always go to places that, that people haven't, not always, but you know, places that maybe aren't on YouTube so much or yep. at all. Yep. You, you like to go to these random places in the middle of nowhere. It's like, why don't you do more of that and also show more of who you are, like yep. be yourself. Mm -hmm. be, be be more Luke and not just nomadic Asian. And yep. uh, once I started doing that, then people started to get to know Shoko and the dogs, yep. and it was really good. And it actually became like they're part of our family, part of our friends. That's it cool. It was really nice, yeah. but it was very difficult for her at first because yeah. you know, Japanese are naturally very private people. Mm -hmm. And so she's she she has uh, always been supportive. Yeah. But has of course it, there's been like barriers that have to take some time. It's like I, I didn't use her name at first, uh, or you know, and then and then I did, and then she didn't want to be on a video, but then she did, and she enjoyed it, and then she didn't want to be on a live stream, but then she did, and she enjoyed it. So yeah. you know, it's uh, it was not like an instant process, and I think okay. this is true for I've heard this story from other streamers whose uh, girlfriends or wives were very hesitant to be involved at first, but then yeah. they they kind of you know it's it's an adjustment. Yeah. For, I think especially for Japanese people. Right, right. Okay, cool. That that's uh, that's interesting. Um, it's cool that she's supportive. You know, because um, uh, you know, not trying to stereotype um, all Japanese people, but you know, overall, mm -hmm. I, th I would say the culture is a bit more conservative. You know, especially right. when it comes to like non-traditional jobs. You know, so that's um, yeah. that's cool that um, you know she's supportive of that. You know, so. Um, kind of changing gears here. Uh, so you've you've been to many places in Japan. So where's been so far your f absolute favorite place you've been to? That, that's that's really hard. That's it's really hard. I know. Um, it's, it's my hard. <laughs> my, I, I, my my trip to Noto Peninsula, and I just mm -hmm. went there again like two weeks ago. Uh, that was that's still one of my favorite videos. That was the first one that the dogs and Shoko were really in, mm -hmm. and. Our first big big trip but that was my first time to adventure there and every place we stopped just kind of blew me away it was so yeah. different than than traditional japanese places and then uh, so i guess ishikawa in general because we went to kanazawa before that oh and yeah it was again kanazawa was like everything that japan could have to offer in one yes <laughs> one walkable area you know you could yes. you can spend an hour you, you can spend like three days yeah. just near kanazawa station but yes. you still see new things and uh, yeah, so just everywhere we went around there, I was I was in the food and the water and everything. But I've just I've never been there in winter, and I heard winter is pretty tough. So mm. uh, I mean, it's it's hard to uh, to say that that would be my favorite place ever. But in summer or warmer times, th those have been incredible. I like Fukui a lot. Yeah. I like Toyama. I like Niigata. I, I the whole Sea of Japan side. Yeah, I was, I was I gonna really say Sea of Japan area is really nice. Um, I first went there, I went to like Niigata one summer, went to the beach, like I just, you know, at the time, um, I was just, I was seeing this girl and like, it was summertime, we were both on vacation and I was like, yeah, you want to go to the beach? And she's like, sure. I said, yeah, I'm, I don't really feel like going to like Ibaraki or, or, you know, Shonan or anything. And she's like, let's just yeah. go to, let's go to Niigata. I'm like, what, really? That's a little bit far. It's like, nah. So we just drove to Niigata in in the day spent spent the day at the beach and drove back it was back in Tojigi at night I was like it was yeah a three hour trip you know to Niigata but it was definitely a cool experience being on the Sea of Japan you know and then just last year was it last year yeah 2020 February 2020 right before like all the corona stuff blew up um I actually went to Kanazawa for the first time and I was not necessarily blown away, but it, it has a certain charm, Kanazawa does, and I was like, this is probably one of my favorite places in Japan, yeah. bar, n bar yeah. none, like, the, yeah. the, 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 the art, the, like, there's art everywhere in the city, just, you know, random yeah. sculptures, um, the, the mm -hmm. station itself is, has its own art piece there, you know, uh, it's, it's similar to Kyoto in a way, you know, there's not a lot of tall skyscrapers, it's very you know kind of traditional japan food's amazing you're right it's it's a great place i, I want to explore more of that area you know especially around maybe this time of the year summer autumn spring 
So, yeah. Did you get to the Japanese garden, like the big one by the castle? The uh, Kenrokuen? I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so <laughs> I was with my girlfriend, and she has, like, ho- like horrible allergies. And oh. that, that park nearly, like, killed her. Like, we enjoyed it, but, like, she was suffering pretty hardcore during that. So, yeah. That's unfortunate. But, yeah, 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 that, yeah. that and the castle itself, the castle grounds and everything is... Yeah. yeah it's just peaceful place it, it is it is and it's it's you know easily accessible like you can pretty much go anywhere within walking distance you know um obviously with a few exceptions but man you know like you said the food was great you know if you like seafood um i i was never really a huge seafood fan but i i like i and i like crab so i i ate a lot of crab while i was there that was nice so it's a good place uh i need to explore more of that so yeah so it, it, it's uh, nice yeah. to nice to hear, you know, s- someone else with the similar similar experiences that you know. So uh, I also like uh, Izu a lot. Izu yeah. is a great place. Uh, I've been there this year, but almost every year before Corona, we would mm. every year before Corona we would go down to uh, Shimoda and mm. those the white sand beaches and and just enjoy. Yeah. And yeah. It, all, all the stops along the way, all the little towns, and you know, I, I like Atami too. Not a lot of people like Atami. It's kind of I love, I love it, I love it, Tommy. Tommy? Great. Oh yeah, I, I love it. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. But everyone I talk to, they're like, "Ah, oh, it used to be great. Now it's kind of just like run down a little bit." But it's it's such a cool place. I don't know. It's, a, it's got a good vibe. Yeah, there's a lot of places I've gone to like just solo where I'm just exploring, you know. And mm. Atami was one of those places. Two years ago, uh, I went there and I had a Maybe great time. Yeah. I had a great time and you know there's certain places that just kind of stick out to you that stay in your memory and kind of hold a special place for no really particular reason they just speak to you you know and Atami was one of those places and when I saw what happened this year with the uh the landslide I man I I was it was devastating you know like it made me sad even though I've been there just once it's just it's like damn you know that's uh that's kind of rough you know for that place so yeah, I think I've been there like ten times. I love the W so much, yeah. but but I I was planning to go, and then I saw the mudslide, and I didn't want to be you know some jerk walking around with a camera like right. I was gonna go right around that time, and then when I heard it happen, I was like, I better I better kind of wait. Wait, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to be. It, it had nothing to do with that, but it would have looked like it might have had something to do with that, and it just would have felt insensitive. So I decided yeah. to kind of postpone that trip, but hoping to go back soon. It's it's yeah. such a nice place yeah that that's why i didn't i, I held off going to um, matsushima um some years ago because i was wanting to go there but it was like right after the the big earthquake and mm. like that area had been pretty devastated i'm like i'll just hold off a little bit and i just never got around to going so i've, I've still never been but i'd like to go you know um man yeah i've been all over honshu but i i've never been outside of Honshu, like I've never been to Hokkaido, Kyushu, Okinawa, any of those places. So, uh, have you been outside of the the main island? I haven't been to Hokkaido or Kyushu, but I have been to Okinawa, mm. and I've traveled through Shikoku a few times. Okay. And okay. Shikoku is awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, that's another place I could say it's like high on my list of places I really like. From what I've seen, it looks absolutely gorgeous there. Yeah, I think there's a there's a hiking trail that goes around the island as well. That like it's some sort yeah, of yeah. There's pilgrimage or something uh, it's like 88 do. shrines you can visit all 88 yeah. shrines uh, uh i was thinking one day i would really love to do that I yeah just, it, would t- it would take like a month or two months i think but yeah so <laughs> that's that's kind of i'm on the same way i want to do like this really long like two week to a month hike somewhere either there or like the appalachian trail in america or something like that but i just can't see myself <laughs> like when can i take just a whole month off just to do that you know um right yeah with with my my current work like i can i can definitely take vacation time but it's always still sort of switched on you know so um i could never i i i could never just take like two weeks just to be off grid you know and uh that's that's unfortunate uh, aspect of that but i would still just like to do that someday just to sort of go out by myself along one of these trails and just you know do that you know i guess i guess a lot of people have that dream you know what i mean so yeah well that's what uh before the job situation was getting worse Mm. uh, we used to have 
pretty decent vacation, like two weeks in spring, two weeks in summer, four weeks in winter. So we would actually, you know, I could actually travel and, and do stuff during that time, which was really great. But then they started taking all that away anyway. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, some a lot of the international uh, kindergartens have not, not quite that long, but they do have some some time for you to go visit home and things. And those were good times to travel around. Right. But yeah, uh, I, I kind of think now is the time because I don't know when I'm going to have to go back to work if I, you know, it's going to take some time to build this up. So yeah. if I have to go back to work, it's going to be hard to take like a month or a few weeks off. But I was thinking about doing a similar thing at some point, just you know, right. taking some time going in the city and exploring it really in depth mm-hmm. in a way that I would never be able to do it before. It'll be fun. So where's your next um, your next location that you'd like to visit in Japan? Like that's on your on your list, Dr- like a dream area that you haven't been to yet. Well, uh, I, I started a donation goal for this and I already got it. But unfortunately, like, you know, we got the a lot of stuff happening, extended state of emergency and Olympics and all that kind of stuff. So I was just kind of waiting some of this out. But yeah. uh, Totori, Totori Ooh, is okay. uh, a place I've always wanted to visit. The, the desert that's yeah. on the sand on the dunes. Beach. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sand dunes. Right. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. And and I I've always wanted to go to that area. And mm-hmm. I thought uh, while I'm on while I'm heading back from there. I, I, you know, I can live stream and YouTube there, but on the way back, I can go places like Kyoto, which should hmm. be nice to visit before, before the borders are open again. Yeah, it, I've been I've been I'm, there a few times, and there's like no tourist. It's great. Yeah. See, yeah. I haven't been there since college, actually. Wow. And wow. it was okay. it was packed. Yeah. yeah. It was packed and it was rainy, so I didn't really get to it. And it was winter, so it was like really, wow, uh, like really, a trifecta uh, was, yeah. of, of <laughs> fucked. So sorry, but yeah, yeah, yeah well, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm thinking to sort of do that kind of thing, just taking okay. some time off. About well, time off, but you know, like taking some time. It's a little difficult because I don't like uh, leaving my wife to you know take care of the dogs and the house yep. and everything by herself. It's, so it's better when they can go with me, but yep. Yep. it's it's also hard for her to do that. So sure, uh, yeah. We'll we'll see how far how like how much time I can get away, but I kind of want to do this grand adventure where I go mm. to Tori, uh, Kyoto, stop at a few other places, and yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, yeah, I got I got a buddy in Totori. He's he's actually been on the uh, on the podcast uh, about a year or so ago, and um, he lives out in Totori, uh, Ken. So it's um, it's a uh, apparently it's uh, one of the. It was one of the last places to even get a single case of Corona. I guess now they they have it there, but it was mm-hmm. uh, that and I think Iwate Ken were like one of the few holdouts that were pretty safe. They were safe. Know, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously that's changed, but um, one area if you haven't been, that I highly mm-hmm. recommend uh, for summer is uh, Aomori. Uh, oh, I yeah, the like the ne- Neputa Festival and then Hirosaki City has Neputa which, the next day it's it's like nothing i've ever seen it's like nighttime parades but the the floats are like you know old style japanese art like like samurai fighting oni and stuff it's it's and it's all bright colors and it's it's awesome like i have some photographs like of that on my uh, instagram uh but like pictures don't do it justice when you see it in person you know so obviously Right now, large crowds in Matsuri's aren't really a thing, but you know, Probably, one, yeah. once that's back, I highly recommend doing that. That it's it was it was great, loved it. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah, I I've never been up to Aomori yet or like that. I, I haven't been much in that direction hmm. to be honest. Like, Tohoku's that's, great. Uh, the one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to go. I want to yeah. go. Yeah, um, Tohoku's awesome. Um, I really only stopped in Aomori, but you know, I you know drove up there so it was going through Miyagi and uh Iwate and you know it man how long there's like 10 hours maybe 10 to 12 hours driving it's a it's it's a lot but uh you know once you get up there it's it's great it's you know beautiful country up there yeah mm. well that's uh, definitely on my list uh as, as well as Kyushu and Hokkaido yeah. but I really do it yeah. That's a, uh, the thing is, I, I there's so much that I haven't explored, so mm-hmm. I want to take advantage of this time now when I can explore yeah. uh, a little bit free, freely and not, you know, my holidays were always around, 
the, the, the like school and work holidays. Yeah. So well, everyone else's up, holiday, you know, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a fr- frustrating thing for my wife because she always had to travel when it was busiest and most expensive. Yeah. Uh, but now we get a little bit more freedom. It's nice to, that's uh, cool. to find some time. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I also enjoyed Wakayama and Mie. We did sort of yeah. a, a tour uh, a couple months back and that was okay. also a quite beautiful place. Yeah, I haven't really been down that way. I've been to like Nara and Osaka and Kobe and Kyoto, but you know that area of Kansai, but never really like kind of south part of Kansai. Yeah. So yeah, what's what's um, what's to? I mean, obviously, there's some pretty famous places down there, but what what really stood out to you in that area? I think it's um, it's like a very spiritual journey. Hmm. It's very much uh, because we walked the path of the gods. You know, like the uh, Kuma no Kodo, I think hmm. it's called. And you walk so many steps and through just beautiful forests past like 800 year old trees and things wow. like that. Yeah. And there's just a, there's just such a vibe there that's amazing. You get up and there's all these temples and shrines and a waterfall. It's like, it, 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 kind of like I mentioned before with Kanazawa, it's like you took all the parts that people imagine about Japan. Yeah. Like there's, there was cherry blossoms, like making carpets of, of petals along the way. And Damn. it yeah. was, it was so, it was so incredible. Like it's, it, it was almost enough to make you like cry kind of yeah. like moving you know yeah and, and so that was that was already really great and then mm. after that we took kind of a day off and then we went to the grand isei shrine in mm. Mie, which is like one of the what was the, one of the top three yeah uh like most spiritual most like wonderful shrines and you really feel something different when you're there it was uh, that's cool yeah it was just wow there's there was a river a, a beautiful clean crystal clear river going by you know how you usually clean your hands with like those little ladles and yeah. things? Yeah, yeah. People go, you, you clean it in that river because it's it's that, it's like... That pure, yeah. That pure, yeah. And it yeah. it felt amazing. It was crazy. Like, That's cool. The whole time it just felt so, so nice. And and I don't think I've ever felt quite that way as, I, as I've been anywhere in Japan. Fukui was close. Fukui was, had some very nice spots, but... Yeah, Wakayama Mie just mm. uh, it's it's a good it's a good trek. It's like kind of life changing. I think that's definitely on my list. Right and, when I started yeah. all this too, yeah, it, it, yeah, right when I started all this, I was like, I went there and I was like, okay, I'm ready. I can do this now. Okay, <laughs> so so yeah, I I take it you have some 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 videos up about that. I'll I have to go check those out. So I need to go through all, making... all of your backlogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, I'm I'm making uh, Wakayama now. I've been I've been okay focusing on getting the live streaming going I've been getting yep. the gear and learning all the stuff and once that's kind of running smoothly I want to get back more into the traveling videos because those are still my passion and right uh, but uh, the Fukui videos out and that had some good spots and Nilto video and a few of those so mm-hmm. yeah uh, I, I try to find these places I'll look on YouTube I'll look on Google Maps I'll find somewhere I'll just be like that looks really cool yeah yeah what yeah, is this? yeah 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 I, I yeah. do the same <laughs> thing man I do the same thing yeah. I, did, I did that um, not so much Japan I need to do that more with Japan but when I travel solo, like Thailand or something, I, I never made a plan of where I was going to go. I had a like rough idea, but um, yeah, I went to Thailand for a week and I knew I wanted to be in the north. I didn't want to be in like Bangkok or any of the south, like nothing against that. I'll probably go back someday, but I wanted to explore a part of Thailand that a lot of people, well, I mean, you know, a lot of people don't imagine as Thailand, you know, kind of the northern area. Right. and. Obviously, a lot of backpackers go through there. I mean, that's a very... I went to a pretty famous backpacking spot, but, you know, um, like Chiang Mai and, you know, kind of up near the mountains and the Myanmar border and stuff, like, that That was just really cool aspect of that country. And, you know, I loved that area so much. I was like, man, I'm just going to stay here for a couple more days before I go back to Chiang Mai, you know? So... Um, same thing it's like i just picked random spots on the map i'm like let's just go here and figure out what to do you know so it's uh that's that's yeah. i think one thing for me that that's it's it's messy but i think it's also what makes uh, my long videos a bit unique like my shikoku yeah. video or my mm-hmm. or my Nilto or those ones of, is that I, ha- I have like one or two destinations in mind but most of what i film is just like i'm just driving and i'm like that looks cool or I see it on a map. I'm like, wow, I want to find what this place is. Sometimes it's yeah. nothing. Sometimes it's crazy, like gorgeous. And I'm like, you know, nobody's doing yeah. this. Nobody's yeah. here. It's in, why? Why? It, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think just last year. So um, 
there's a pretty famous spot in Tochigi for the koyo, like the uh, colored leaves, right? Uh, Nikko, mm-hmm. like all the people from Tokyo go up to Nikko. And it is, it's, it's absolutely right. gorgeous up there, right? However, you know, um, being living in Tochigi, I've been there a few times going to Nikko. So I'm like, okay. Um, just randomly on, um, on Instagram, I saw this, the most gorgeous like picture. And it said somewhere in Tochigi, I'm like, where's this? I want to find this. And I search on the map and it's like right in the middle of nowhere. And I, I said, okay, I'm going here. And the next weekend, and I drove like an hour, hour and a half, just down these country roads, winding in and out of small, almost like, like roads that are small enough only for one car to pass through. So like when another car is coming the other way, you got to like hope hope they don't scrape against you you know so uh it was down some of these really uh shady paths you know and then but you get there and unfortunately i made it like when the leaves started falling so it wasn't as gorgeous as the picture that i saw but it's still one of the most breathtaking photos i've ever taken and there was like nobody there there maybe four or five people were there and i said this is like a hidden gym Uh, but it's a it's such a you have to drive to get there you can't you can't just take a train like a normal like tourist spot so um that's one aspect of not having a car anymore that i can that i'll miss i mean i guess i can rent a car but you know finding these like hidden gems mm-hmm. you know of japan that not a lot of even japanese people really know too much about that's exactly. where I, that's where i want to go that's where the places i want to explore you know so that's that's exactly my my thing so I, yeah. I i that's what i always tell people is i just go off the beaten path i try to find stuff that you know and i'll, and I'll look at youtube and i'll be like you know none of the big youtubers have done a, this video they're always going to these really amazing places but no one's done this spot no. maybe like a couple of japanese people have yeah maybe if lucky or if they're lucky you know so a few of my videos are like i'm the only one who's made one there and I'm yeah like, well wow, this yeah. is cool yeah you know that there's one japanese youtuber i found he explores like kind of these sorts of places and he found I think it was near Kobe maybe it was in Hyogo it was like a like abandoned train station like with a train tunnel and everything it was really really cool I need to find out his channel maybe you know about it uh, but uh, he kind of he narrates it but he kind of dresses up in like kind of traditional clothing when he when he does these trips and stuff so um, oh, that's cool. yeah yeah he's, it's it's pretty cool so um, I'll send you the link uh, after but uh, he, yeah, if you're if you're looking for like other YouTubers who do similar stuff, like he's one of these guys, a Japanese guy. So yeah, yeah I'd love to know. Hmm. Uh, th- there have been a couple of times where I'll I'll stumble a- across like a yeah a Japanese YouTuber's video, or I find a place and I find their video, and hmm. I can see a little bit of it through that. I'm like, okay, that looks gorgeous. So I want to check that out. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does help. Yeah, yeah, and actually, uh, one one really cool thing that I think a lot of people overlook uh, especially I guess because it's in Japanese but if you go to like a bookstore and just go to like the hiking or traveling area they have really detailed maps and and locations of like places that you can go to that are off the beaten path like I found a book that's like um, you know how Japan has its famous hundred mountains Hyakumezon well oh yeah yeah yeah, like Tochigi can has its own like 150 notable i think it's 150 mountains total in 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 tochi but um basically some of these are like only 200 meters tall they're not very tall but (laughs) they have a certain history and charm to them that are unique all their own so um some of them even though they're like 200 meters tall you still need like a rope to kind of climb up certain aspects of it you know so or climb over a big boulder or something so um like those are really cool for day trip hikes you know that's okay yeah i'll have to check that out yeah Uh, i used to do i used to get the little books for each uh prefecture i missed you know those little like yep books about this size Mm -hmm. and they're all in japanese so not a lot of foreigners will use those but i actually like those a lot they have shops and pictures and places and like even plan out whole day trips if you want to just see like what what could be done in a day exactly uh, yeah uh, i should check out more of those books actually and the magazines those are nice yeah yeah yeah, I mean, they're, you know, a treasure trove of information there that not, like you said, you know, a lot of foreigners really don't do that because they're just kind of turned off. Uh, it's all in Japanese. There's no English at all. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if you can, 
<laughs> if you've studied your kanji, you're, you'll be okay, you know. So <laughs> yeah. But even like the names of some of the places, like you'll see kanji, like I've never seen that kanji before, or or a combination, and you're like, how do I? Oh, that's not ex that's not at all how I thought you say the name of that place. You know, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. some unique twist on the pronunciation. You know, so yeah. <laughs> when but, we're driving, play a lot of places. The name, the name characters don't really match up with traditional name no. naming, right? Mm. So uh, as we're driving, we see a rest area or a sign. Um, Shoko and I will try to compete to see what the reading is. And I've I've actually won like once or twice. We either either we both lose, she wins, or occasionally I I win. Yeah. it's fun. You know. Yeah, like, it's like, like how do you read that? It's like a, a little game. You guys like. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's our road trip game. Yeah, it's mm. fun. That's cool, man. So, um, yeah, once the uh, the pandemic sort of calms down, uh, is there anywhere outside of Japan that you'd like to, you know, visit or explore? I would love to. Uh, I, first and foremost, I'd love some of the community that I've met to come yeah. here. I'd love to ah, show yeah. them around and, and meet them. Uh, I want to go back to San Diego. Uh, I've been I've been fully vaxxed, so I don't know yeah. how. The, uh, the the how easy that is now, or how long that would take. But I would love to go see my family. It's, cause it's been a while. I think you still have to get at least leaving Japan. You have to get a PCR test seventy two hours before. Yeah, then I don't think you have to quarantine in America. It might be different in California. I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, but I know coming back to Japan, you even if you've you have a seventy two, you have to take a PCR test seventy two hours before leaving. It has to be negative. You have to take another PCR test when you arrive, and you have to quarantine for two weeks. So it's still quite a hassle to travel internationally. So yeah, hmm. yeah, I think I, that might be tough. But uh, the other one is just I, I haven't really traveled much in Asia, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would love to do that. I'd love mm -hmm. to go to Korea, China, yeah. uh, Taiwan. Um, Korea is cool. Places. Yeah, Korea is cool. I haven't been to Taiwan, but yeah, uh, Seoul. I went. I went probably. It was great, but it was probably the worst time of the year to go. It was right around <laughs> Christmas and New Year's. I had never experienced that level of cold like I've I felt cold before but this was like you felt it down to your bones almost you know it, so. so it's colder than Japan like, well I guess where you were living anyways right yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. so uh, I, the thing the problem for me is since I love Japan so much and I love exploring Japan so much every time I had a holiday or a chance to go I'd be like looking at plane tickets but then I'd be like but I could also go and take a Shinkansen down here or go drive down here yeah. and spend like a night a whole week exploring all these areas that have been but I should get out of the country but you know so it's it's gonna be hard for me because um, I'm still nowhere near ex close to have explored everything so right but, right uh, that, that's that's tough well cool well uh well Luke man it's been great talking to you um so where can people find you I know you got you know your twitch and your youtube um plug those uh, but uh, you know i'll put the links down in the uh, in the description ah, so thank you yeah yeah uh anything else you want to plug uh, i'm on i'm on every so yeah reddit uh okay. youtube twitch so i like to consider youtube as my main and twitch is secondary and okay. reddit is i guess third but uh yeah i'm on uh facebook instagram and twitter as well and cool people are trying to get me to use my shorts and a few other things in hmm. TikTok. So um, I haven't really started. Oh, wow. that yet, TikTok. But. Okay. Well, cool, man. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah just, um, uh, you know, afterwards, just send me any links you want me to, to put in the notes and sure. I'll, I'll share them for you. All right. Oh, oh I guess also yeah. big too is the discord. Cause that's where everyone gets the notifications and we talk about Japan and stuff. Cool. It's, uh, it's a very nice community. So I think that would be the, the best place for people to start. Cause it has all the links as, re as well, but yeah, mm. I'll, I'll give you all everything. Thank cool. you so much. Awesome. This awesome. has been fun. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Let's let's do it again soon. It was good. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime. Uh, okay. All right, brother. Thank you. And uh, have a yeah. good evening. And uh, uh, we'll talk soon. All right? Sounds good. All right. Cool. Take it easy.